Music theory, this is David Farrell. Welcome to a video all about scales, exclamation point. In this video, we're going to be talking about scales, and in particular, some different scales from the major and minor scales that you know. We're going to be introducing you to some of the basic ideas behind a couple of different scales that we encounter frequently in 20th century music, and honestly, some of them in a lot of other kinds of music as well. We're just going to be getting into the basics here. We'll be talking in much more detail about these in class, but I want to get a good foundation laid here so that we're ready to go come time for class. So without any uh, further pause, let's get into our first one. Pentatonic scales. Pentatonic means five notes. And when we talk about a pentatonic scale, we can refer to any five note scale of which there are very many very, very many from very many places around the world. Lots of five note scales. In Western music, however, we're commonly talking about a very particular pentatonic scale, which I have a version of written for you here, sometimes called the major pentatonic scale. A couple of things to note about this scale. First, it is a subset of the major scale. We have do, re, mi, sol, and la from our major scale, five of the seven notes. Another thing to note is that this scale contains no half steps. It consists of major seconds and minor thirds only. And so sometimes we call this the anhemitonic scale. Hemitone is a sort of a hemi, like hemis hemisphere means half, tone means like note, and so no half steps, the no half step scale. There are other scales that have no half steps, but this one for some reason gets that name. This scale can also be rotated so that any scale member is the pitch center. Okay, we often start it in this place, but we can imagine music using these five notes that has any of these notes as the pitch center. For example, here is a short excerpt of some music using C as the pitch center from this scale. Here's an excerpt using E as the central pitch. Again, same five notes, but just a different pitch center. Pentatonic scales are common in lots of different kinds of music. We can find them in classical works, but we can also find them in popular works and in folk musics from around the world. Lots of different cultures use a variance on the pentatonic scale. So it's one we'll want to be familiar with. Let's move forward to another scale. Our next scale is actually a collection of scales, the modes of the major scale. Mode is another term that we use often just to talk about any scale, but a, there is a specific set of modes that we want to talk about. A common way to think of these scales is that each of them uses the same pitches as the diatonic major scale, but has a different note as the pitch center. And so we can imagine the C major scale centered on C, the C major scale centered on D, the notes of C major scaled on, centered on E, and all the way up. These modes can be encountered in, again, a lot of different musical traditions, including modern music, but also in early music and in folk music. Let's take a look at the different modes and how we can think about them. Here are the seven modes of the major scale, written in a way that they're very frequently seen using all the white notes of our keyboard, using the pitches from our C major scale, but with a variety of different pitch centers. When we have modal music using all the pitches from our C scale, centered on C, we have what is called the Ionian mode. I will admit it is tricky to tell the difference between Ionian modal music and music in C major, but there are some differences that we'll talk about more in class. The Dorian mode is the same as our C major scale starting on D. You can also think of it as a natural minor scale with the raised sixth scale degree. The Phrygian mode is the same as our C major scale starting on E. You can think of it as a natural minor scale with a lowered second scale degree. The Lydian mode, our C major scale starting on scale degree four. We can also think of it as a major scale with the fourth scale degree being raised. The Mixolydian mode, the same as our C major scale starting on scale degree five on G, you can think of it as a major scale with the seventh scale degree lowered. 
the Aeolian mode. You can think of it as the same as our natural minor scale. And finally, the Locrian mode. Locrian C major with, with B as a pitch center. You can think of it as your natural minor scale with both scale degrees two and five lowered. The mnemonic I learned was, I don't particularly like my aunt's lasagna. You are free to use that to remember the order of the modes. And as with all of our scale topics today, we'll be discussing the qualities and characteristics of these modes in more detail in class. For right now, I just want you to be familiar with how they're built and how to think about them so that we can write them. There do exist other sorts of modes. A lot of chromatic alterations to these modes are possible and can occur in music, and there are a lot of different imagined combinations of these modes that we can find. So don't be alarmed if you see a scale being used in a piece that is not one of these modes. Uh, that's something that is not too uncommon. I will list one common variant here, which is the Lydian dominant mode or the Lydian mixolydian mode. This is one that we do see from time to time. It can be thought of as a combination of modes or as a mode of the melodic minor scale. We can imagine this as a mixture of our Lydian mode, which has a raised fourth scale degree, and a Mixolydian mode, which has a lowered seventh scale degree. And we can see both of those in our C Lydian Mixolydian scale here, the raised fourth F sharp and the lowered seven B flat. We can also think of this as a mode of G melodic minor. This is the G melodic minor scale with C as its pitch center. This is one common chromatic or altered mode that we can find. There are others as well. Let's move along from modes to a different grouping of scales. Modes of limited transposition may be a slightly intimidating phrase, but it is not that complicated of a concept. When we talk about modes of limited transposition, we are talking about scales that do not have 12 unique transpositions. What that means is that if you start the scale on some pitches, you will get the same notes as if you start on different pitches. This is different from our major scale, our common major scale, right? If you start the major scale on any chromatic pitch, you will get a unique collection. There, there's never going to be the same collection showing up on different pitches. We can compare this to a very common mode of limited transposition that you're already familiar with, the chromatic scale. There's only one transposition of the chromatic scale. It doesn't matter what note you start the chromatic scale on, it's always going to consist of all the notes I've got written here. If you write the chromatic scale on C, or on E, or on A, or on G, you're always going to get all your notes. So the chromatic scale is a common mode of limited transposition. Let's talk about some other scales that have a limited number of transpositions that we can find in post-tonal music. The whole tone scale is another scale that has a limited number of transpositions. The whole tone scale is a six note scale built off of repeating whole steps. Every interval in the scale, every step interval is a major second. There are only two transpositions of this scale. There's the one that starts on C that I've written here, and then another one a half step apart. If I started a whole tone scale on D, it would have the same six notes as the C whole tone scale. If I started it on E, it would also have the same six notes. If I started it on F sharp, it would have the same six notes. There are only two transpositions of our whole tone scale. I've used the enharmonic spellings that make the most sense to me in this presentation, but it's not uncommon to see different enharmonic spellings used here because there can be some awkward intervals depending on how your whole tone passages go. Let's listen to a short excerpt of some music that uses the whole tone scale. Whole tone scales have a very unique sound. There's something that we do see in quite a bit of literature, often associated with French composers like WC, but we can find them in other places as well. We want to be familiar with this scale and able to both write them out and identify them when we see them in excerpts. Let's look at one last mode of limited transposition. The octatonic scale, the octatonic scale. Octa meaning eight, this is an eight note scale. It is built off of alternating half 
and whole steps. All of our octatonic scales have the same pattern of half steps and whole steps. There are three transpositions of the octatonic scale written above. The first one starts on C and alternates between half step and whole step. It starts with a half step to C sharp, then a whole step to D sharp, then a half step to E, and so forth. The second scale starts on C as well, but it goes with the other pattern. It starts with a whole step and then follows with a half step and then a whole step. The final one starts on C sharp and starts with a half step and a whole step, half step, whole step. You might say, but what about C sharp starting with a whole step and then a half step? But that would be the same as our first scale. If we look at our first scale starting on C sharp, we have a whole step up to D sharp and a half step up to E, a whole step up to F sharp and a half step up to G. Okay, so all the different notes that you're thinking of, you can find them both in whole half or half whole inside of these three scales. And like our whole tone scale, enharmonic spellings are going to be found frequently here to make the music easy to read. So don't get locked into these particular spellings. Just get used to that interval pattern of whole step, half step. Let's listen to some tasty octatonic sounds. The octatonic is one of my favorites. There are lots of interesting sonorities that you can find in there. It was used very frequently in music written between 1900 and the, the Second World War in 1945. Composers like Stravinsky and Bartok, you can find lots of octatonic sonorities in their music. Again, built off of a simple pattern, whole steps and half steps, three transpositions only, a mode of limited transposition. This is our octatonic scale. Guys, that's it for our video on scales exclamation point. In this video, we talked about a couple of different scales that we want to be familiar with. The pentatonic scale, the modes of our major scale, a collection of seven different scales, really, as well as a couple of different modes of limited transposition, the chromatic scale, which you already knew, and then the whole tone and octatonic scales. This video just scratches the surface on these scales, talks about how we construct them and how we think about them. In class, of course, we'll spend a lot more time looking at the harmonic implications of these scales and how they can actually be used to get different effects. Please, if you have questions, bring them to class. If you have qu questions, rewind the video, watch the sections again to make sure you understand. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time in class. Have a great rest of your day.